What's up? How you doing today? Long time oh. no see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good, you punk. Oh, how are all the punks doing out there? We hope that you guys are doing well. We appreciate you guys listening. And uh, once again, if you're on YouTube and you're watching, please uh, subscribe and like the video and comment. We appreciate all that. If you're on iTunes, make sure you uh, give us a rate and a review. We appreciate it. Uh, and if you're if you're listening on iTunes and Spotify, make sure you have it downloaded as well. Hit that download button. Uh, today we got a, a a good guest for you guys. Uh, he is hailing in from Arizona. He has his own radio show on Dash Radio, the Mastercast. His custom trap edits and remixes have been played by DJs all over the globe and supported by huge DJs such as Diplo, Grand Theft, Twerk, Vice, Caked Up, and more. He DJs more times a week than there are days in a week. He's a plus-size model and a pizza expert. Please help us welcome Master Monk, a.k.a. Pete Suh. What's up, y'all? Pepperoni Poppy, Master up. Monk here. <laughs> How you guys doing, man? Good. I think that's my favorite alias name ever, Pizza. I love it. <laughs> love it. Uh, yeah, I just came up with that stuff. I was uh, I kind of went heavy with the pepperoni and the pizza branding, I guess. But <laughs> here we are. It, it was money. I uh, we definitely knew you well from that. You were uh, you were repping it hard. I loved it. <laughs> How yeah, many man. days a week would you say you actually eat pizza? Um, I've cut it down a lot now. I got really big. I think I was at my heaviest of like 330 pounds, but, um, I still, uh, I still frequent the pizzas. I actually probably had one about 20 minutes ago before I jumped on with you guys. <laughs> what's the, uh, what's the go-to spot, the pizza spot out by you? What's your one? Your uh, one? There's, well, I live in, I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, I think like one of the, we have, uh, we, we just got like a couple other really big pizza places like Chicago style. So we've got a Giordano's out there. We've got a Gino's out there now. We've got a Lou Malnati's. Uh, but there's also a lot of really good like local places. Uh, Pizzeria Bianco was nationally rated the number one pizza place, and that's in Phoenix. So I frequent there. They know me by name and they know my order. So <laughs> what is the order? Uh, I do there. I do a margarita and add... Uh, why am I blanking on the name? It's a fancy bacon stuff. Canadian bacon? No, 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 no. <laughs> it's like it's like Italian thin meat, and it looks like bacon almost. I forget. Begins like a me. prosciutto. Or prosciutto. Something? That's what I'm looking. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm looking for. <laughs> um, I'm just plain pepperoni. Every time I try, I, I might, you know, I might throw on some feta if I'm getting crazy. Maybe uh, right. maybe pineapple if I if I feel like I need some fruit. Oh, you're there. a pineapple on pizza guy. Oh. I know. I'm saying not not regular. It's just if it <laughs> not not all the time. But I I'm not scared about it. I ain't mad at it's it. It's okay, man. You're you're cool, dude. Drew, I'll, I'll let it pass this time. <laughs> but if I'm gonna eat, it's a hundred percent only pepperoni. That's for Pepperoni's the most part. A solid go to always. Yeah. Anytime I get get weird, it's uh I, I'm disappointed or I get fucking mad heartburn. <laughs> that gets us um, in age i guess yeah and it, it don't get easier um well you you were telling us that you're hosting a pizza festival here uh yes um, is that it did that all, that all come from this branding that you were pushing it so hard or how did you get in came, charge of that yeah. it all came from it because like um they started doing a pizza fest uh seven years ago and the first one that came around 
uh, I just went and I've, I've gone every year uh, decked out in this pepperoni pizza onesie. And then I showed up, <laughs> me and my buddy showed up the first year. Uh, he was wearing like the pepperoni pizza romper, like the little shorts, but I wore the just full on onesie. And we're just <laughs> walking around eating pizza, uh, you know, drinking, having a good time. And by the second year, people were like, yo, we took pictures with you guys last year. Let's get another one. And it just kind of became a, a recurring thing. By the third year, they started uh, they started asking us to like, you know, hey, do you guys want to jump on stage and kind of like hype the crowd up and stuff? And I was like, yeah. So we did that. And then uh, it started <laughs> getting into magazines. So there's like national publications, uh, American Airlines, their in-flight magazine, Spirits in-flight magazine, all of the, the pizza fest. Yeah, all of the pizza fest, uh, like their their marketing material was pictures of us in the pepperoni pizza suits. <laughs> so tight i yeah, love that i didn't even know like there was a couple uh there was a couple uh djs and other people that were like you're in my in-flight magazine and they're like sending me pictures i got like about 20 different people sending me pictures of that but i mean like i said from all of that they just decided that we're going to be like the official unofficial spokespeople and mascots of the whole thing so are you like <laughs> on stage like hands up if you like pepperoni and like people are going Just nuts like yeah like, who's here for the pizza everybody but yeah and who's here for the beer yeah but, <laughs> oh man but it's, it's a lot has of the uh, has the onesie or the, the the outfit like changed or evolved over the years i mean like it's still the same onesie but um i'll bring like over the years, I've brought more like inflatable stuff, uh, like a pizza cape. Uh, you know, we bought, I ordered one of the years, I bought a hundred of those uh, pizza lanyards where you can throw a slice of pizza in it. And we were just giving those out to the people. And so, I've never I mean, seen that. Dude. I've <laughs> seen it on his Instagram. I've seen it on his Instagram. It's like a lanyard with like a plastic thing that a slice of pizza goes into. And you can just like, wear it around. It doesn't get fucked up. When you put it in there, I mean, of course it does, but you know, it's <laughs> you know, you got grease and cheese, maybe a pepperoni, and everything just sliding around. You got that one inch pool of grease sitting at the bottom of it. But oh, you know, it's so amazing! It's, I love it. It's novelty at that point, man, but it's yeah. so fun. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious See, when i go to festivals i uh come home and then i put the lanyard on the back of my door so if i went to your pizza fest there'd be a whole pizza sitting on the back of my door still <laughs> <laughs> just rotten you know <laughs> <laughs> oh man but so, yeah that's a lot of fun um it's going to be november 13th and 14th at phoenix arizona hans park so if you guys are watching from phoenix check it what 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 are the games that are ran or is there bands that play it or is there DJs? Do you get could you DJ it if you wanted to? You know what, man? They've asked me to DJ it and I say no. Um only because it's like that's like it's like my thing. I actually like being there for the festival itself, not to I wouldn't want to work it. Um but I mean I'm still kind of working it, but like as far as having to like play music and stuff for people, I mean I do love doing it, but I love the pizza festival itself more. Uh, so they do have bands. Uh, they haven't gotten a DJ yet, but they do have bands of bands like they're pretty good. They have like rock bands, uh, uh, modern like funk bands. Uh, you got dudes that do hip hop uh, covers of songs like just crazy metal now. It's it's actually really, really fun as far as like their entertainment and music goes as well. So. So is it any why I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but I consider it like a chili cook off. Is it is it like a, a contest where someone gets the, the you know the first the first place prize or how does that uh, yeah they do have like uh they have uh, I think they have uh it's uh this will be like the first time I'm actually on like judges panel. Uh usually I'm there, you know, just to act a fool and <laughs> have a good time. But um they do have, uh, uh, I guess, different categories. So they'll have like best artisan pizza, best New York slice, best uh, best deep dish, and stuff like that. So, yeah, crowd favorite. So that's cool. I, I it is hard. Uh, you know, you mentioned like you uh, don't want to DJ it because uh, you just like going to it. I feel the same way about several things that 
uh, happened here in the city. Uh, opening day for uh, Cincinnati Reds and Major League Baseball here is like one of the biggest opening days uh, there are in in the world and or in the United States, I should say, for baseball. And the party here is right. always crazy. And I always have that internal battle of like, oh, I just like going. I don't know if I even want to DJ today. But then it's like, okay, I'm going to spend like 300 bucks today. So like if I DJed, then I could at least, you know, like cover the cost and maybe make some money today still too. But then, you know, it's just one of those like, okay, then I got to convince my friends to come to the bar that I'm at there before, you know, we go do something else. So I feel you. I think a lot of DJs can relate to that as like keeping keeping stuff that you actually like doing just uh, personal and it's hard balance. I'm sure there's stuff that Drew you have too that are, that's like that. Uh, the more and more I've been doing this, you have to block out days, right? Where you just want to go not work and just be a regular person. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> so... Uh, you were in Tucson. You're actually in Tucson today, but you were living in Tucson. Now you're back. You you're back down in Scottsdale area, correct? Yeah, correct. Um, I was out there. Uh, I'm originally born and raised in Tucson, but so I was here, and then I moved to Scottsdale. I was out there for about ten years, and then uh, I was working for one of the companies that owns the like three of the nightclubs I was DJing at, and then they moved me down to Tucson to help open another one. And I was doing booking, entertainment, directing, and doing all that stuff. So that contract is over back up in Scottsdale, uh, you know, doing the thing, working with you guys, TMS and everything. So it's been fun. Yeah. We're stoked to have you on. Yeah, you've been you've been crushing it. Uh, Thanks. So how many how, how are you working for a, a complete different bar group then now than what you were? Uh, still working for the same company. Uh, just uh, they they opened a lot more properties out in the Phoenix area, so they need people to you know cover them. So I moved. I went back out, decided to branch out, get more stuff, change the scenery back up. That's know. cool. How how, how, how far uh, is Tucson from Scottsdale? I, I'm not super familiar with Arizona. I, uh, I have family two, out there, but I don't go. Yeah, that's an hour and a half, two hour drive. Okay. Oh, that's not so bad. Yeah. And nah. Scottsdale is more of the it's the college town, right? Tucson's not as big of a college town. No, Tucson is actually quite a big college town. Tempe's the college town, and Scottsdale is just like party city, man. Yeah. But Phoenix, Tucson. I'm sorry, Phoenix, Tempe, Scottsdale, Goodyear is all like drivable, right? It's like kind of all the Phoenix area. It's all the Phoenix, the greater Phoenix metropolitan. Yeah, it's like the whole yeah. greater Phoenix area. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's like, uh, I, I like when I've been out there a few times recently, it's like, uh, like LA where everything's kind of like far spread out from each other. It's like a little yeah. bit of a drive. Like Scottsdale is like 20 minutes from like downtown Phoenix and then mm. Goodyear's like, 20 minutes the other way so if yeah you're going, that's the opposite like, way. <laughs> yeah so but uh Scott how many Hill is is insane it's really it's such a concentrated party area it, there's a thousand yeah, clubs got... in that one little area yeah yeah there's every everything's walkable you've got like a, a like a three square block area and there's something like 20 different uh bars and clubs in that area and every one of them is just stupid like stupid packed, and and you're booking now, or you're DJing for a, a couple of them, or just the one? Um, no, I'm DJing for a couple of them. So, like I said, they own they own the company I'm working for owns about nine uh, nine different spots right there in that area. So, oh, that's crazy! Oof. That's crazy. So, yeah. are you playing? Uh, what's your like um, your typical week? What nights are you doing? Um, I've got a Thursday through Sunday and my Saturdays and Sundays, I double up. So I double, I was triple gigging on Saturdays and Sundays during pool season. But, uh, right now it's a Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday brunch, Saturday night, Sunday brunch, Sunday night. Damn. That is a lot. Vegas schedule. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, how are each one of the spots different? What, like what, what's the, do, are the, are yeah. they strict on what you're playing? I mean, you know, I, I, There's... I play down, I play somewhere and they always, one's like a little bit more pop heavy. One's hip hop heavy. You know, they try and change it up. If it's the same 
owners. You know, they want it to be just a little right. bit different. Um, no, there's a, there is a little bit, uh, there is a little bit of a difference on, uh, on the places. So, um, my Thursday is a throwback Thursday. So it's literally like, you know, 2010 and back, uh, Friday night. It's weird because it's a, it's a country bar. <laughs> so it's kind of like off, it's a little off brand for me, but, um, so they, for the country bar, they have two different locations. They have one in Gilbert and one in Old Town Scottsdale. And, uh, the one in Old Town Scottsdale, I probably end up playing maybe like five to 10 country songs a night, but the rest is just, they want, they want energy. So they're just yeah. like, you know, if everybody knows a song, if it's like a bar sing along, or if it's just, you know, just energy in general, you know, playing a lot of, playing a lot of fuse, playing a lot of Drew Pierce, you know, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, so it, um, our, they're not teaching line dances. We had a uh, phrase on the other day and oh, he's, no. he's doing country as well. And he was telling us, you know, one of his top plays is Hicktown and it's because it's it's a line dance and they teach this line dance and they get out and do some two steps and hoedowns and whatnots. Nah, like I said, with the, the country there, it's like they kind of want like the new country, the party country stuff, not so much like the line dancey cheese stuff. Um, yeah. But, you know, I'm not really even, I'm not big on country. I make like, even with music I'm making, I'm making trap. So um, what's right. crazy though, is I'm still even able to play that stuff and they absolutely love it. So uh but each one of them definitely does have its own, uh, have its own flavor, have its own, like kind of each spot has its own brand that they want to stick to. So, yeah. Do you, do you get to play a lot of uh, your, your stuff and all your sets? Oh yeah, definitely. I always do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> except for ex the only one I really don't play any of my stuff at is like the throwback night. Um, every once in a while I have like maybe an older remix or something that I've made that I can throw during those sets. But for the most part, um, with the, with the, you know, two thousands music, people want to hear that song. So, right. Uh, so you're doing the throwbacks on Thursday, the country spot. That's not really country on Friday and Saturdays. What's your Saturday spot? Uh, Saturday brunch is, you know, it's usually chill stuff. Uh, yeah. nothing too crazy. So it's kind of, I kind of mix it with like, you know, like loungy chill stuff, uh, maybe some, some disco hipster goodness, uh, and then yeah. uh, you know some throwback. He says so. It's a little bit of a uh, little bit everywhere with that. And then the Saturday night spot is bevy, and that one is uh, it's it's a little more heavy on like hip hop and throwbacks, but like that one. And I'm there again the Sunday this Sunday morning, and then I'm at the other bevy location Sunday nights. So. Do you even leave? Set up a set up a cot in the DJ booth. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a quick turnaround, you know. Leaving the place at like two thirty, three o'clock, being back at at eleven a.m. to start. So, uh, it's I've done those. It, it's it's tough. Yeah, it's, it is. I think it, it's it's tough for me to wrap my head around a new set after I was just there and thinking, "Fuck, did I play that?" You know, right? Or I think that's the biggest part. You almost have to yeah. have a mimosa or something to get back into it. Oh, I, you definitely have to. It's like, okay, <laughs> last night was rough. Let's have a quick one back in party time. Let's go. And you're ready to rock it. hundred <laughs> percent. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. I, I, we were just talking when we were talking with phrase too, uh, about like the drinking and DJing. It's, it's tough. It's a, it's a vicious cycle to get pulled into when you're, when you're working that much. Oh, exactly. 100%. It's like, all right, well, I drank on Thursday and I'm still feeling rough and now it's Friday. So let me uh have a couple drinks to to get get going here Friday. Next Even thing out, you know. Yeah. yeah, next thing you know, it's Saturday morning and you're like, gosh, damn it. I gotta have a couple <laughs> drinks. <laughs> and then it's like so, how much time do you get in between the the sets? Um, sometimes it's as little as an hour. Oh uh, just enough to get across the way. Yeah, yep. yeah I, sometimes I was a little an hour. So I was booking a bunch of spots. This was a couple of years ago, um, and you know we would just be like, "Who wants to do doubles?" And you're basically enough to drive across town and get get right back into it. Um, I it's tough. You clean that history and you try and recreate it. What what's something that you do to to keep fresh? Because you're at the same spots all the time. Just curious, like something you might be able to tell people listening how you would change up your sets or just, you know, ideas 
Just um, so how I do it is uh, I, I there was a while where I got really into uh, setting up crates and everything, and you know, with setting up crates, I found I found at least for me that there was uh, it, it became really easy to fall into routine. Because, you know, I go into certain crates and I know like having crates is good. I'm not I'm not saying for people listening to not set crates, Um, you know, it's good because you know exactly what's in there. You know exactly what's going to happen. But I think that also kind of robs some people. uh, It did me at least of some kind of creativity. So if I feel I'm starting to get into like a routine, I'll go to the all folder. Right. And then, you know, maybe I'll run across something that it's like, oh, crap, I haven't seen that song in like forever. And then you play it and it can work. And it, it's it's a it's a good way to keep things fresh and, you know, maybe see a song you're, you've you been looking over and it's been in your library for damn years or something. So that's that's what I start to do when I when I start to notice from like, you know, it's like uh, probably the last couple of times I played, I played this exact song afterwards. Starting right. to fall into routine. Let's go to the all folder. Right. I agree with you 100%. When I was doing residencies, it was, uh, I got more into an all folder uh, because the one, you get sick of playing the same set at the same or same songs at the same place, but you know, the staff gets tired of it too. So yeah, trying to hear you to, every week. Yeah. So are you strict about what you put in Serato? Because I think at that point to play in the all folder, I had to be really strict with what I would throw in. You know, I, I couldn't add just a, constantly adding new shit in there. I would had to make sure if I put something in there, I, I really um, tagged it correctly or at least was able to find where it was or what it was. Right. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty strict about is what, like what I download in general. Um, everything I download is either going to be played for my radio show or for or for a gig, uh, I'm not. I don't really even download stuff, sadly, for like my own enjoyment. Um, so, right. you know, for the most part, I'm not really listening to music for my own enjoyment because of with uh, between the, the gigs, uh, doing my radio show. Because like when I'm not when I'm not DJing out, I'm in I'm in the studio uh, making making my radio show or working on edits or trying to like you know find new stuff. For which uh, DJs, if you're looking for, you can find on directmusicservice.com, our sponsor today, uh, Master Monk's uh, exclusive edits over there. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, just had a so, couple uh, new ones go up. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, just the, uh, what is it? Uh, Last Resort, Papa Roach, uh, the brand new uh, DJ Snake song edit went up. So that one's actually popping like crazy on TikTok right now. So yeah, I grabbed both of them. Um, I haven't had a chance to play them yet, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, I grab both I, of them. I'm the same as you. Uh, I, I don't really download. If I download some, it means it's probably getting played. I And it's funny is there's a lot of guys that just download shit and just download it and download it and download it. And it's like, dude, can't be doing that, man. Like nobody's yeah. got time to sort through all that. And then two, it's like, they wonder why they don't they gotta have like an external hard drive with it. I'm like, dude, you're not playing that stuff. Get rid of it. Like it's exactly. just a waste. So yeah, I don't I don't I don't music chord. So same, same. Uh so you've been in the clubs uh for a while now. Same Drew and I, we've all been DJing for a while. Uh and you've been in Scottsdale and Tucson and you've played in some pretty big spots over the years. Uh what do you have uh like any memorable moments with any big celebrities at any of those spots? <laughs> Anything you want to share? <laughs> um I've got some moments. Scottsdale's <laughs> basically baby Vegas for, for yeah. DJs that don't know it and I don't even mean to call it baby Vegas because it is not at all. It is uh it is his own entity, but just if you haven't been there, that's to put it into perspective of what the level that this is it is absolutely party town it, yeah it it's nothing to see there. like a, a 75 year old man roll in with like eight fucking dimes that are like all <laughs> 10 yeah yeah and you're like what it's yeah. like it happens all the time there i feel like. oh it's it's real common so i know good. there's there's definitely celebrities down there partying at all yeah. points uh, Mark Cuban has a he has a part uh, stake in one of the one of the bars uh, that the company I work for uh, owns. So, 
Yeah, it's a spot called Bottle Blanche. So Mark Cuban's down here a lot. Okay, they had, they had one in Chicago there for a while. I don't know if it's still there. Uh, there's still one in Chicago. Uh, Steve Smooth and JJ Flores and a couple other people play there. Uh, there's one in Dallas opening one in Miami in the next couple months. And then there's another one going to San Diego. Oh, nice. Dope. Yeah. The company's really big. Uh, that's cool. That's awesome. So you've, uh, you've partied it oh, up wait. with Mark Cuban. What you're telling us without telling us. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I've been there. We've been DJing while he came in. He just comes up, stands yeah. at the booth, gives you a little dap, uh, asks for a song. He'll throw the headphones on and take a picture, and then he's usually back to his table. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime well, you request. Those? Yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to know, too. Um, I actually do not even remember, man. I couldn't tell you. Uh, yeah, that was on one of my long weekends, and that was like the last gig of my of like my stint. So, you know. The Shark Tank theme song? <laughs> Jaws <laughs> remix. <laughs> 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 what is the the um is there a theme song for his team um is, uh yeah it's called invest Mavs, in dogecoin <laughs> he's whatever coin he's hyping whatever yeah. coin he's hyping he's something every but... one of those has some kind of theme i have to look it have up. have you guys have you guys like delved into all that stuff are you guys crypto crypto guys or what I have a little wow. bit and a little bit of everything, uh, just because yeah. uh, if it, I feel like I've done more dumber stuff with my money in a, in a, uh, you know an hour's time at the casino. So if I'm willing to do that, then what's what's putting a couple hundred dollars into a coin that I don't know anything about that could yeah. maybe potentially? I feel I've, it's no different than walking into the casino and pulling that lever. I feel like so. Yeah, it's a gamble. What's a gamble? Yeah, yeah. I so I, I was like, is this going to turn into Drew Infuse's crypto? <laughs> crypto <laughs> I, I, no. had a, I had a, I had a couple bucks in Doge um, and I, I made some money on the Doge coin. And then Elon went on SNL and tanked it. Uh, yeah. Then I, yeah. I, I sold it, but it was still uh, I made a couple bucks. I wasn't mad at it. I still I still have uh, some money in it. I'm trying to look it up right now. Uh, let's see. I have like. Let's see. I, I have a couple bucks in drone stocks right now. Drone stocks, huh? Oh my god, yeah. this is perfect right now. Stonks. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you get on that train for a while? Was it? Um, I jumped on. I I did jump on uh, on Bitcoin pretty early, and uh, oh, nice. I've been sitting on it. Like I jumped like real real early on it, but. Yeah, it's just you have a, I'm not one full coin. I think it was like uh it was down when it was like still in I think it was just around 2500 when I jumped in. Nice, and dude. I got I ended up spending about like 6k, so Cuz that is All right. He's got a couple coins. I I heard at one right. point it was like the one full coin club or you know, if someone has one coin, but no, that's dope. Good for you. Yeah, I'd he's got. To even look at it. He's got two point two coin or something, but it's like it's crazy because when you think about that, it's like it was nothing. It was nothing, and everybody was like, "That's not going to do anything." It's not, and it yeah, what? It's like it's sitting at like sixty three thousand this week or something like that. It's 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 at. It's wild. I I what's wild to me right now with all the crypto stuff is like. There's just like a new one popping up every day, it seems, and somebody's getting rich off of it. And it's yeah, that island coin now for the island yeah. boys. <laughs> it's not there is not an island boys. There's an island coin. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Oh my gosh. <laughs> island <laughs> coin. You <yeah>, island <laughs> coin. Oh man. That's makes sense why those kids are they they probably got them like in on it early, and now that's how they're flexing with all that cash in their TikToks. Or yeah. like, what else do they? What else do they do? Like, you know, they're both <laughs> they're they're twins, and they're twenty years old. Like, what? Do you I, are I, you are you messing with the NFTs as well? 
I'm, I'm not. I haven't man. really. I don't. I, I haven't dove into that. There's a there's a lot there's a lot of problems that I see with that. It's like they're like, don't screenshot my NFT. I'm gonna. That's my property. But like, I'm gonna screenshot it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I am gonna do? I'm gonna screenshot it. <laughs> I'm a screenshotter. Oh, I don't know. I ever heard that. I like it. <laughs> so, are you uh, oh, making all? Uh, are these memes? Are they stolen screenshots that you're posting? Is that what you're uh, saying? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, on my story, you know, if it's not one that I personally um, personally made, um, I, I at least give the people enough to be like, you know, they can. It's, it'll be like tap to see posts like it still goes back to their page yeah yeah um, you just share it. either that or it still has their uh it'll still have their their watermark on it so you know if if i'm if i'm the ones that i'm making actually those 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 don't have, have those links so if you guys don't follow me actually master monk at master monk at, on instagram and twitter m-a-s-t-a-m-o-n-k uh yeah he's good for the the, the meme game strong I post a lot of memes, probably stuff that I shouldn't post, but it's fun. <laughs> the more offensive, the better. So, all right, back to the celebrity question. Mark Cuban can't be the only one that that you've been. Uh, yeah, I feel like you're holding out on us on the yeah. Mark Cuban. I mean, there's there's a there's maybe a maybe just get a roundabout a roundabout way. Wait, wait, maybe like say what what's what show they're on or something like that. So you don't have to give away any names. Um, I mean, there's like a lot of people. Okay, so people like going to Scottsdale because they can kind of get away from the high. So yeah, uh, yeah, what yeah. Happen <laughs> what happens in Scottsdale stays in Scottsdale. It's baby Vegas <laughs> right here. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't really feel like snitching on people, and uh, you know, we gotta. We can't edit out, edit out people's names, apparently. So Maybe a uh, funny story. <laughs> yeah, you don't even have to use anybody's name. You could just tell us a story of a, of a celebrity. I can tell you a story about how I was in Vegas. Uh, I played there, and I was at Excess, and there was a celebrity there that I was partying with before he stopped partying. Ah. Uh. Okay. So a certain, uh, certain gentleman that uh, he, he made music. He's not a DJ. It's a rapper, if you can call him that. Um, he was Island there. Boy. No, but he looks like. I mean, he's probably like the original Island Boy. <laughs> Still a white guy. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, so we're we're up there. We're in the booth in excess. Uh, dude hands me a uh, champagne bottle. Thought it was already weird because there's no damn label on it. But you know, start drinking. Yeah. It. Uh, <laughs> after I'm done DJing uh diplo goes on and i start like i'm still in the booth and i end up falling asleep uh standing up in the <laughs> dj booth because uh said said rapper guy uh probably had some other things in that champagne bottle oh, so man, oh, man. <laughs> yeah uh one of my other buddies who was a resident there ends up uh politely asking me to go with him and we threw me in a we threw me in a in a in a Uber to get home, but yeah, that is the story, and I will never drink with that celebrity again. <laughs> yeah, that the the label I think you called it that was uh, that was the red flag. Oh yeah, and I was like, he's handing me a drink. Of course, I'm a drink with him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that was at uh, Excess. Have you played back at Excess ever uh, since then, or was it a one one time deal? Or I think um, I think you were just hanging. Definitely, were you... it was it was definitely like I played like maybe a couple times after that still. But uh, yeah, there was. I, I think they kind of understood what happened. So <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's right, good. Right, right. <sighs> you play. You still play a lot in Vegas. You do some. Vegas um, stuff? I have. I have not done Vegas stuff uh, in probably. A couple years, I've, I did the uh, the pools with uh, Mike Carbonell and uh, and um, there was like another Shout party that I did with Exodus. Yeah, so I mean that was like it's been a few years. Yeah, I feel like it's been a few years since the world's even been normal. So 
it's probably yeah, been I mean, like the last two years don't count. So, you know, it's even I feel like I've been saying st- catch myself saying stuff like, oh, yeah, the last time I was there. And then I'm like, oh, no, it's been like five years <laughs> because yeah. the last two years just don't even count. How, um, how with that being said, are th- you th- is everything uh, in Arizona and Scottsdale, everything's pretty much back to normal. Everything's everything like full. Is- yeah, everything in Scottsdale is pretty much back to normal, man. Um, they were they were kind of like already back to normal as soon as like things like halfway reopened. Um, they they opened everything back to full capacity and all they were doing was just they, they ran with it. Um, I don't think they really cared too much. Um, but yeah, the, there were people there like their staff at least was uh, was was pretty careful about a lot of stuff, but their capacity and everything, it was still almost as if nothing had happened. Yeah. Everything was so uh, different no matter where you were in the world. Uh, And then some of the rules and regulations and everything is just so arbitrary. Like, you can do this, but you can't do that. And it's like... Wear a mask when you, until you sit down and then take your mask off. (laughs) Yeah. Makes, made no sense. Right, that was the stuff that was crazy to me. Is like, you you could be in the airplane, you could be sitting down, you could take right your mask off, to yeah, yeah, take your mask off to eat, but you can't go in the airport restaurant and sit at a table next to somebody. I'm like, wait a second, this is this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it was pretty. Uh, it, it didn't make a lot of sense, but but that's good. Things things here have been pretty much since. I want to say like June, pretty much fully. Maybe, maybe it was, maybe it was the end of May. I can't remember now, but it's been like nothing ever happened for the most part. I mean, I live in a condo building that's uh, got 178 different units in it, and it's a little weird still. Like some of the residents are like fully masked up wherever, like they step out of their house just to take the trash down the hall, and so like I, I don't care anymore. I'm just like I get. I, I got vaccinated and that's here nor there. Like whatever people want to do is cool. I don't really have an opinion on that either, but I'm just like, it's, I'm over it. Uh, it's been two years or a year and a half. Well, yeah, it'll be like two years. Yeah, year and a half. Yep. Yeah. I'm just over it. So I'm happy to be back working and it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. That's what's I important. Just, I'm, a lot of people yeah, were, you know, especially with us being DJs and everything we went from, and I know a lot of us, uh, you know, if whether you run, whether you're like a, a weekly club DJ or or you're, you do weddings and you're booked with that and corporate events, you know, we all went from uh, doing what we love to not being able to do it at all whatsoever. Like regardless of, uh, you know, if we were like some of some people were able to qualify for the for the assistance. Uh, some people weren't able to get an unemployment at all. I know I know people on both sides of that. But yeah. The thing that like I feel like the hardest for me was was just not being able to like go out and you know play, which really sucked. A hundred percent. I promised myself I would never complain about working, and now almost working too much. <laughs> and yeah. I keep telling myself I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Still excited, but I need. A, I think I need a, a quick. I need at least a week off to catch back up. It's been a crazy couple months, but I'm so grateful to not be sitting at home. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, something we like to ask everybody that comes on is, what are your top most played songs in Serato? Do you have your DJ? Are you is are you on your DJ computer? I am. Let's see. So, yeah, I don't just, normally turn my plays on, but I mean, yeah. I might have to do that. Yeah, just turn, also, hit the play. Yeah, we'll Hold see on. the I top to five. My, yeah, I got to grab my charger real quick. <laughs> You're good. So uh, Drew uh, is actually going to be out in Scottsdale this, what, Sunday, Monday? Monday you getting in? Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if it's – I might have already been there by the time this airs, but um, we, uh, we're – DJ Collective is next week, and we're uh, going to be in town doing the DJ Collective. Me, Scooter, oh, and Warren. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to meet up for sure. Oh, Definitely. All right, top played songs in Serato. Let's check this out. 
I think I can. I think we can make it out Thursday night to come see you. Um, we'll 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 definitely plan something. Okay. Yeah. There's no way. <laughs> this is what always happens. This is the best part about it. <laughs> nah, there is no way. You have to read it. You have to. Come on. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so number one doesn't oh, really... Uh, doesn't, so sometimes, it, it I, I'll say this. Sometimes I'll say this. If you've downloaded it from someone else or someone gave it to you, their number might then be it on has, it. So it might yeah. be a little skewed, but you know, we're just going off the tops. Okay. And you tell us right. if it's wrong or skip it. No, nah, you know what? I'm literally just going to name the ones. Cause like, I know some of these were definitely not. All right. Well, by me. Just name, name the first one. And then first uh, one is first one's bad bunny. <laughs> I <eat> the... <laughs> <laughs> not shocked, but not shocked because you know it's Arizona Latin community. Blah, blah, blah. Also, Bad Bunny, huge it's artist. Bob Bunny, Bob Bunny, yeah, Bob Bunny, Bob Bunny. So it's Kaita. Uh, is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. Do you get blown up for that? Uh, blown, do you get bo- uh, blown up for uh, for, for Bad, Bad Bunny? Bunny? All day. Yeah, Bob Bunny. And and oh, is that the one yeah. that everyone wants? Because I play that one a lot. Um, that one. There's uh, there's like two others. There's Safaera and Yopare Osola. So those two, like any one of those three that like that were just mentioned are like probably like the ones. Um, I then <laughs> Whitney Houston, I want to dance with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it's a banger. Funny. Is there are you just dropping the original or I know um, uh, I always play that one's first. A, um with that one, it's uh it's donks at it. So uh, yeah, his I don't know what his one. goes into, yeah. Yes, that's the then, one for um, sure. Shout out, Donk. And why is and then hotel room the Deville edit with Wow? There, that's funny. That's what phrase that was in Phrase's top plays yesterday too. Uh, really? That's got it's had a, a bit of we were talking or talking about that on the last episode. It's had a little bit of a resurge. Uh, yeah. Uh, Are you playing? Go. Do you play uh, the? Oh, is it Riton uh, Friday? It's basically the meme. That's actually it's on my it's on my top five. That's the next one. Oh, oh there it is. <laughs> do you play them back to back, or is it just you play them different parts of the night? Different parts, but I mean that's definitely around. It's it's right around the same BPM and everything. So I'd probably you know it'd be somewhere around there. Yeah, I. I, I tend to back to back them quite a bit, um, but see, my bigger pitbull song is Fireball. I, I play really? Fireball more constantly than I play Hotel Room. But I, I guess I'm missing it out. I mean, why not both? <laughs> <laughs> pitbull all day. Yeah. So four was see. any honorable mentions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, honorable mention, I guess. Uh... I mean, body is the next one. The next after that uh, one, loud oh, yeah. luxury. Um, yeah. No, make the sound. <laughs> oh, body, adi, 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 adi. I think that's that's one I probably play like everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Oh God. And you just play the original of that, or do you play? Uh, yeah, the original. I mean, I I have like a I have an edit of it, but the thing is, it's um. It, even with, I think the edit's really good, but it just doesn't do as well as the original. Like there's right. some songs, it's just you, you just play the original. You know, I used to loop the adi 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 until like people. I would just loop it and let it go, like for as long until people would start <laughs> looking over <laughs> because I just like I'm like this song, I hate it, and like so like. I just want to show how dumb it is. So, like, it literally would go for like sixty seconds sometimes before people would start being like, and then they're just still like going. Yeah, yeah. Like the the drunk girls are like out there. Like, <laughs> do you? It was. Did you? Did you just loop it, loop it until it gets smaller, then drop loud luxury body, <laughs> body right into it, like your own transition? No, it was just. It was just straight adi 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 adi. I love it. Um, Meg, with go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, Meg the Stallion's the other one. I feel like right now that's like Bad Bunny. We were talking a little bit about uh, 
that was phrased like I just can't get away from it. It doesn't matter. It's like, yeah, I know I'm going to play Megan out, St- Meg the stallion. I know, I know, I know. Just chill. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The dudes are the same with Drake. Yeah. Way too sexy. Way too sexy. Yeah. Come on. Don't play. Does, does way too sexy actually pop off for you guys though? Cause I, I play it. They're yes. hyped and then I, it, it dies. It dies a minute into it. Yeah. I feel yeah. like after the first chorus, it kind of just, it's, but uh, it, pop, it pops for you. It I, I believe pops. it. I think, uh, I don't know if it's maybe just like a Scottsdale thing, but um, Scottsdale is a lot like they've, they've made the kind of like the, I guess like the, the jump back to hip hop. Um, so, yeah, you know, like a lot of the, a lot of the, like the tech house stuff and bass and deep house stuff that's like, you know, more popular right now isn't really resonating with a lot of Scott. So there are people that will go and see those artists like, you know, John Summit comes or whatever to, to Phoenix or Tempe, Scott, or whatever people will go to that show and it will sell out. But if I were to just drop a John Summit song mid set, it's not, it, it just doesn't hit, you know, like also depending on the spot, but I, for the I, most part, yeah. I'll say that any anytime I do a club, it's ninety percent hip hop, and then you can go up tempo and hit some bangers and then back down. But the what's odd enough is a lot of that deep houses are just regular houses hitting at a lot of my weddings right now. Right, uh, it's it's that's the almost all the weddings I'm booking they want a lot of you know big room house or <clears throat> even just like the the deep house shit they like it so. I don't know it's interesting to me, the age the age range. So maybe maybe in a cu- five more years we'll be back to playing up tempo again. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see, man. Yeah. Is there anything else uh, newer that you've been playing lately that like you think's big or been working or even maybe just something newer that you like? Um, I mean, like I like the stuff that I'm listening to and I actually tend to like it. it usually, end up tend to be like more on like the uh like on the uh like trappy like bass edm type stuff uh but i mean as far as like as far as like uh like new hip-hop or whatever commercial stuff uh i can't really say that there's like too much like uh like with the drake stuff obviously i thought way too sexy was like i knew it was gonna be a banger even though i personally didn't really care for the song the Uh, video is amazing the The video is amazing so awesome man yeah the video is amazing (laughs) <laughs> so he's asked me. I was like, yo, beach. I'm built like Drake. I'm built like Drake. So um, <laughs> yeah, team extra large. Let's go. Uh, extra large. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, I can't. I really cannot say that there's anything like commercial wise that I'm just like, yeah, that dude's that dude's next, or this person is is next, or whatever. But when I but that's what's dope about a lot of the the trap stuff that you make is that it allows you to at least if you're playing hip hop you don't have to go up tempo but you could change the vibe. Exactly. What, what I why I like that is just give it that vibe. I don't have to change the tempo, but at least just give it an edge or give it something to change up the monotony. Exactly. You know, because I can only do so much uh, tuned eight oh eights with the uh, triplet uh, <laughs> triplet hats in it. <laughs> right. There's only so many Nikki meets uh, Megan the Stallion meets Cardi B sets that all city girls. Uh, you could do oh, a little yeah. block of this into the next into the next thing into the next block into a yeah. Muma Tone set. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, prior to the pandemic, I saw that you were doing like some booking or talent buying stuff. Are you still are you still doing that, or is that kind of uh, gone? Yeah, I was, uh, like I said, I was doing, uh, I was doing talent buying and everything. I did start this uh, new job with, uh, it's a company called Global Unity Tours. And um, that's what it was. What what, I saw, yeah. Yeah. So with Global Unity Tours, they're basically, um, they're putting on festivals. Uh, we were supposed to be in Italy this past summer doing a, doing like kind of like Groove Cruise, uh, but on Lake Como, uh, we were going to do. Uh, a couple other places out there. We're in in like 
I, I don't have like the whole roster right here. It's all on my desk, but um, in Scottsdale, but uh, the whole thing, the premise is like, you know, they want to uh, do tours and festivals that promote wellness, unity, and uh, you know, just like just consciousness. So they'll get these artists. Uh, the artists will pick a, a charity of their choosing and some of the proceeds from the show itself will go to whatever that artist who's headlining what what charity they pick to choose from. But there's also like yoga classes, there's, uh, there's sound baths, there's uh, uh, guided meditations and all this other stuff that they want to have so that it turns, you know, it's like obviously go there, have a good time, but uh, work on wellness as well. So That's cool. So are you still going to be doing that when in the next summer or? Yes, we had to move everything, um, obviously. Like uh, yeah. everything was still like with travel bans and everything to Italy. Uh, we weren't able to be able, like, you know, to like go out there physically and uh, get the venues, uh, set up the, the proper permits and everything else that we were supposed to do. So, you know, otherwise we were going to we were going to have to try and pull everything together like last minute. And that was not going to happen. So we're set up to actually do the first set of tours uh, next summer. Yeah, like don't remember the exact date right now, but we're set up to start doing that again next summer. That's cool. So um, are you doing a lot of the talent buying for that or, or how? As far as all the, for all of that, it's going to be me and one other partner doing all of the booking for, for that. So we're, uh, we're doing everything from booking um, like the, the bigger people, like a lot of the, I really, I, I want to tell you the people that we already have, like on retainer because it didn't happen, but um, yeah. a lot of really big acts. Uh, and then we're also going in and researching the local markets and uh, finding like their bigger local people so that we're not just going into, uh, you know, going into a different country a different city and in their town and like not actually honoring those, those local people that are putting work in the scene. So we're going to actually be bringing them in, uh, you know, including them. So it's 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 an all inclusive type thing. That's cool. I'm excited to see more uh, come from that because it sounds really neat, and uh, I'm excited to see who you guys get. And I'm excited to know about the how it all works, you know, and how it goes with, uh, you know, meeting other DJs and uh, from you know Italy and wherever else. That that'll be pretty neat. Uh, so you were doing when you were in. Um, Tucson and you were working for the company that you work for, you were uh, in charge of bookings and stuff there. Um, how many, how many guys were you booking uh, a week or how many gigs were you out booking each week? Would you say? Uh, let's see. So there was two venues there. So I had to put people. So there was a, uh, let's see what a Thursday, two DJs. So I had to put people on like the Thursday nights from like the early to late shift, same thing on Friday nights. Uh, I had to put six people on brunch on Sundays and then two on two people on brunch on Saturdays. But then there was also a whole nother place called Playground where I had to put two people on one on the bottom floor, one on the top floor. And yeah, and then still Saturday nights as well. So, I mean, it was there was a lot of slots that I had to fill. Um, yeah. I was having guys come out. I was um, supposed to come out. I got yeah, death, I that. deathly, deathly sick. I I get I hardly ever get sick, and I if I get sick, it's a sinus infection. I get a bad sinus infection, and I, it was one of the worst ones I've ever gotten. Was that weekend? I oh, I even God. went to the doctor uh, that weekend. I went to the doctor like a couple days before, and she wouldn't she wouldn't give me antibiotics yet because she said I didn't like. I guess you're supposed to be sick with past. It, it was a certain amount of days before they can actually diagnose right. a sinus infection. And I wasn't there yet, but I just knew because I've had it so many times. So literally went back after that, that day, I like missed my flight that morning. And then sure enough, it, it was that. So had I just probably got those antibiotics that Wednesday before I would have been out there and been fine. But yeah, uh, what, what I was going to ask was um, we have a lot of, uh, you know, newer DJs. We have a lot of just different, all different kinds of DJs listening to the show from, uh, you know, all over in their, their spot in their DJ career. If you were to give advice to a young DJ that's looking to play in a bar or a club, 
what would be some advice that you would give to them? One of the first things that um, I, I tell people is uh, just show up. Like go to the place. You don't have to be, you don't have Dude, to like, don't go up and bother the shit out of the guy. But like, sorry, I don't know if we can curse, but like, yeah, don't, you're good. Don't, yeah. Okay, away. So don't, <laughs> but don't, don't go out and like bother the hell out the dude. But you know, just, you can always introduce yourself. Um, show face. Like if you don't even show, if you don't go to a place in your local scene that you want to play, you want to play there, but you've not, you don't even go, you don't support the dudes that are there already. Uh, you know, and it's kind of hard to really, you know, expect people to hand you anything when you're don't you know, just blow you up and don't just blow up your DMs and then expect exactly. to expect a gig, <laughs> but yeah. don't don't put in any work. Yeah, I mean, there was a guy, um, there was a guy that I ended up uh, making one of my residents while I was out here, and um, and he's you know he's really good, but you know he would come out a lot and he would he just you know show face, come say what's up. He never asked me for a gig. He never bothered me once, not at one time. And uh, he ended up being playing on a, playing on a, on one of my off nights. He's like, yo, Hey, come out. I was like, all right, this dude showed up so many times to my stuff. I'll go, I'll go yeah. say what's up, you know? And I'd never heard him play or anything prior to that. And uh, 15 minutes in, I'm like, yeah, this dude gets it. I was like, I got an opening this Saturday. You want to play? And I ended up making him resident after that. So, you know, just being cool, uh, show face to where you want to play, meet the people, meet the players that, you know, that are the players in the game and go from there. I mean, you know. So once they get that residency spot, because, you know, I, I agree with you 100%, but once they get that spot, once they're in, what's what's the next the next thing that you're you're looking for? Or even just to get that residency spot in general. You know, what what are you looking for that why you say he gets it? And what keeps him on the roster? Um, what I was looking for, I just wanted people that that because uh, like each place is going to have its own different vibe. So that's one of the things. That's another reason why I say people need to go to the places that they want to play. Um, if you know, if they can play that vibe that's, that that the room is cool, dope. Um, but you know, you have people that like you know come in it, come at it a little more cocky. Uh, that think they're like God's gift to DJs and stuff. Uh, they can walk in and be like, I'm going to go in and I'm going hard at 10.01, the first song of the night, you know, and they're <laughs> dropping like excision stuff and everything like that. It's you know, that, that person does not get it. Um, know how to build a room. Uh, know how to read your audience. Uh, keep a similar vibe of what, what the people that are playing there. And if that's what you hear people playing there, obviously that's the vibe of the place. It doesn't mean yeah. that you need to go in there and try and show somebody up. Like there's a reason why that the things are that way. Um, so, I mean, that's why I said, like, I got, like, he gets it. He knew how to open the room because I showed up and it was early. He wasn't trying to rock out just because I was there. Right. hundred yeah. <clears throat> percent. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so, with that being said, now we're all kind of, uh, Getting up there in age here. We're not all as uh, young as we once were. What about staying relevant within uh, DJing? We've all done a pretty good job of, you know, staying relevant. But it, do you have any tips or things that you like to do that keep you staying relevant or just even staying on top of music? Uh, production. I mean, that's the one thing that I say. I tell people production is the, is the best way to in and the best way to stay in. Uh, you know, that's one of the things that's like, if you're making music, people will know who you are. If you're still making music, people will continue to know who you are because like, you know, happy said, that's how you stay relevant. Um, and be up on times. There's a lot of, there's also a bunch of dudes that are just like, nah, you know, I'm not like that. And they're stubborn. You know, the stuff we call like the stubborn old heads uh, in the DJ game. There's, there's a lot of people that if you don't, if you don't adapt to the times and change with the times, then I mean, you'll be left, you'll be left behind. So, you know, stay relevant, uh, stay relevant by, by keeping up with times. If you have, if you have the means to produce or get into production, that's going to be a big way to do that as well. Definitely. I, I will say one of the things that, that I find myself, I, 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 I know the answer to getting booked more is going out and being in those spots. And I couldn't agree with you more on, how to get booked and if i was a young dj if i had to do it all over again but i gotta tell you since 
since the uh, pandemic has happened when i'm not djing i i don't like going out <laughs> I, I hate it i'm like i'm, I'm so, I, it's not like it's not even i don't even know the way to say it i just don't want to do it it's i don't know if it's i'm over the 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 crowd or the people or drunk people i don't know what it is but i'm just like i get to places and uh, i'm like I, yeah i don't really want to be here <laughs> so yeah. i gotta figure it out for myself uh like and start getting back out and going out a little bit more and uh doing I, that i don't i'm actually the opposite i don't mind going out um if it's a cool place and i you know i know who's who's there who's dj i don't mind supporting it all um i i, I think i'm just too busy <laughs> <laughs> to to really get out there well, that's, so that's the other that's thing. the hardest like, part is getting out there but or, like when you're i don't know you're already out three four five or if you're djing six nights there are six different gigs it's like man i've been i've been out all week you know it's it's yeah. tough it's tough but i don't think the question was for us we're, we're just saying if other djs are looking to come up that's something you should do you should go show face and do it and Definitely. something that i would add into it is if you do finally get that residency or you do finally get gig, get the gig, just show up on time. <laughs> just be early, you know, be ready for the gig. Be prepared, you know, know how to use prepared. the gear that's there. <laughs> I mean, I'm yeah. sure you, you got that all the time. Like a phone call, yeah. man, this isn't working. It's like, did you turn oh it on? God. Did you that's turn it was, on? <laughs> yeah. When I was entertainment director, we would have, uh, we, we would have a promoter that would insist on, having uh, these college DJs come in and I don't have a problem with college DJs. Uh, but, and I'm, I'm just saying like 90% of the time where there was, where I got a call where I'm at home, you know, chilling, watching TV, like comfortable. And I had like just getting blown up. Oh my God, nothing's working. And it would just, it would be something stupid. Always, always something stupid. Um, I feel like that is always the case with it. It's always, did you turn this on? <laughs> yeah. It's like you have the like the one of the things like the those most common is like they didn't have the link cable uh, for CDJs because you know they weren't using Serato they were just running off sticks yeah. or SD cards but yeah. link cable they're like the other one's not linking I was like make sure the link cable is plugged in it's in there I was like push it in all the way dude like if if it's in there and it's not connected it's, it's the cable just plug it in man try it it's not working yeah I it's going into to it and then I leave. Like angry, like walking in and out. I'm there for like less than a minute, but and it was always every time it was always something really, really, really small. Yeah, I think like one of the but, things I think you got to keep like an extra one of everything you need in your bag. Like if I'm a, a guy playing off sticks and I'm playing off record box on CDJs, I'm gonna keep. I'm probably gonna keep uh, an extra thumb drive with some music on it in my bag. That's like just got stuff that I know will work get through a night yeah. and then i'm also probably going to keep you know uh, a link cable uh, a general like power cable for like a cdj all that kind of stuff but yeah that's that's what's all in my bag man uh yeah extra charger uh extra usbs uh a, a stick just in case like if, if serato if serato crashes or something happens i have like boom here's bangers right here on, yeah. on the stick I got it. I can cover at least an hour with this just while I restart a computer or something like that. Boom, done. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, like like you said though, the like DJs need to know their know your equipment. Like, don't bring in a controller to a place that has CDJs or turntables or whatever. It just <laughs> instantly, instantly, if they show up with the, the original box that they bought it in, and they roll in with that box with their controller to play on it that <laughs> night. <laughs> Instantly, you just go, nah, dude, you're not getting on, man. I don't know how to tell you this nicely, but that is not the move. <laughs> yeah, oh, I man. seen that a lot more often than you not, you know, it was, uh, it was crazy. Or all the tour, all the tour guys that we would see would always come through with um, some colored beats by Dre headphones. Always. And, um, and it was, uh, I'm not, I'm not knocking it at all. I'm not saying they're bad headphones. It just was hilarious that the tour guys without, with like consistently came through with those headphones. It was, it was pretty funny. 
Dude, I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure they like threw him at him like for free. Like, here you go, just wear them. They must yeah. have, right? For real. I with me with headphones anymore, I bought these because they were on sale. These are like their studio noise canceling. But for actual DJ headphones, I literally go on Amazon and I type in DJ headphone. And whatever one is like halfway decent and like cheap. I buy it because I break so many pairs of them. I break so many pairs of them. I, I highly disagree with you. I I think the, uh, the the new pioneers have to be my favorite headphone ever. Uh, um, HDJ X sevens or X tens. What? Yeah, the tens. Those yeah, I, I, those are the only ones I have not broken, <laughs> and I break a, a pair of headphones every year. Let's see. Hold on, I'll the, show you which ones I got in my bag right now. I love those headphones. But what I was getting at with the with the Beats by Dre colored headphones was, if he was, I knew it was the I knew it was the tour DJ, and I knew he wasn't going to be able to actually turn on the gear. He would sit there and go, "Hey man, he, I had this one dude. He was a pretty pretty big uh, um, tour guy's West Coast rappers um, touring guy, and and he was he brought an SZ to the club." And he's sitting there, he's playing, and he looks over behind me while he's performing and goes, hey, dude, the tempo won't change. It's stuck. And and I just reached up, and I hit the one button, and he goes, oh, thanks, man. I didn't know what to do. He was getting pissed at me. I'm going, this is so bad. I can't even believe it. Uh, that's wow. rough. Yeah, that's rough. I had these- That was his gear. <laughs> These are the uh, headphones I'm rocking right now. They're Pioneers. They are the HDJ Q1s. It's what I got off Amazon. I <sighs> Yeah, but those new Pioneer ones are like what, 4 or 500 dollars or something crazy. You can well, get the, the hack. The... Go ahead. Of course you got the hack there. But uh, <laughs> you know the hack too. What is it? What is it? It's, it's... What's the hack, Monk? Tell him. I don't. I don't. I don't have the hack. Oh well, the hack is um, you go. You buy them from Guitar Center, and you get the lifetime warranty, or whatever. You get the five year warranty, not lifetime. Oh yeah, five year then, warranty. Oh, see what I would. And do. then and then you return. And I've never. I haven't paid for a new pair of headphones in like six years. I just keep get just they break after the year, and I get a new pair. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's seventy bucks. You're paying seventy bucks for the the uh, for the yeah. That. Yeah. yeah, no for the for the warranty. That's what you're paying for. Well, I mean, at that point, you're paying seventy bucks for a brand new pair of headphones. Yeah, seriously, uh, every I headphone. Used know, I used to know a guy that because uh, I worked at Guitar Center. I bought all my studio stuff when I was working, but uh, I worked at Guitar Center for like about a year and a half because I was just like, you know what, paying for all this stuff full price is crap. So I was like, yeah. word, I'll work there. I'll make some extra money. Boom. Um, so I had a guy that would come in and he would buy the most expensive pair of headphones. And right, and he would only buy the one year. And right before the year was up, even if they were fine, <laughs> nah. and he'd, he'd, get a, he'd, get the, he'd get the thing for, uh, he'd get a gift card for a brand new pair every time. And he's like, see you in a year. <laughs> it, it works dude I, I i haven't bought a new pair and i you know actually this is the only one that's lasted me these have lasted me three years now which is crazy because i've never you got had five headphones. years i might be running low on it <laughs> yeah i might have I only know. got the three year it might be running low they, on it I have they to might have it. to fall victim to some uh normal wear and tear <laughs> <laughs> I'm is, just gonna, is, is Guitar Center even relevant anymore? You know, there does besides that, I don't know that I've bought anything from Guitar Center. I think everybody's like just going to online stores now. Like, you know. Yeah. It, shout out to one of our sponsors, AGI Pro DJs, if you're looking for gear, TJs. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say if uh, you know, a headphone company wanted to throw a, a sponsorship at the Drew and Fuse show, I'd gladly take it. And uh I will gladly say. You know, these are the best headphones I've ever worn. <laughs> Do not break. <laughs> Monk, which ones are you? Which ones are you rocking? Um, so the ones that I have, actually, I don't, I don't have them with me. Uh, they're in the studio. But what I use for 
I use them for both DJing and uh, and studio. Are the okay. Sennheiser HD twenty fives. Okay. Yeah. I, I like those headphones. Um, they were just. I think I have a big ass fucking head, and they didn't. They really fit on my head. They're kind of tight. You know. Yeah. Uh, no, no, you can actually you can adjust them, but uh, the HD twenty fives are the ones with the their small cups, and I got like yeah. the one wired looking thing. I, I've look, seen them. I I think maybe I haven't tried them. Yeah, I wasn't really big on them because of how small the cups were at first. But um, well, while I mean, we're talking uh, DJ gear, is there anything else uh, lately, tech wise? Uh, anything, anything that you've really been into? It doesn't matter if it's like a camera or whatever. Is there anything tech wise you've been into recently? Uh, Even so- tech wise, uh, with uh, well, with. I mean, I just I just upgraded to Ableton uh, 11, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but also, notice anyways, anything like, different? Uh, I feel so I was like, gonna buy it. I feel like the uh, the warping with uh, with acapellas and everything is just a lot smoother. Uh, how it auto tries to correct your like if you get an acapella, and you know how it kind of like just puts warp markers and everything in there. I feel like it's a little more accurate now, so you don't have to spend as much time. Uh, warping stuff by hand with acapellas and all that stuff, so that's dope. Uh, the way that it runs automation is a little bit more smoother. But yeah, that's with that one. Um, gear wise, I've been I got like a 360 camera, so I can get cooler videos of like you know where I'm at venues playing and stuff. Did uh, you get? I saw you do one the other day. Yeah, you get yourself one of these guys, the Insta 360s. That's the exact same one I got. That's what I got. See? <laughs> Everybody's got it. That's the exact same one I got, man. It's but, so fucking money. I just haven't even edited. I haven't had time to edit the, all the footage I've got, but I it is money. It's it is it's great. And uh the great thing is I love like you can just hand it to somebody and be like, hey, go stand out in the middle of the crowd for 30 seconds and stand still and just hold the camera up. <laughs> like yep. uh, and they don't they don't have to know what they're doing at all, and you can get great footage. Exactly, because you can just edit it on the app right there and do the little swirl and that's yeah, it's, yep. it does all that cool stuff. Yeah, it is a great, it is great. Uh, people, it, it's crazy because me and Drew have been doing this podcast. Uh, this is your episode will be uh, eight. eight, so it'll be two months already. Um, oh and uh, people keep hitting me up and I post the camera. I'm like, well, you clearly aren't listening to the podcast because. If you were listening to the podcast, you would know that You'd we've know. already recommended this camera nine thousand times. <laughs> it's it's the best camera for what it is, for the price, for what it can get. It's just the best camera for for footage. Well, uh, what else? What else you you get new? New tech. Um, uh, I just like actually just started messing around with Ableton Push. I'm late to the game on this uh, because normally I just do everything with uh, with keyboard. Like actually play with the keyboard. I've been playing piano since I was five years old. So um, normally I just I do it with a piano. But uh, push has gotten really good as far as uh, being able to make things fast uh, for you know with my leads or bass lines and everything. It's the way that it's laid out is a lot different than a than an actual keyboard, but um, it does make sense in its own in its own way. So that's been like a whole fun new tool to. For, for music production and everything for me. Would you Did have you get a- that when you got Ableton 11? Was that kind of the same purchase? Uh, no, they were separate purchases. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a bundle. And if I would have known, I probably would have just done that. It would have been a little bit easier on the pockets. But <laughs> yeah. Is there, any, <laughs> is there any advice you would give to a uh, somebody who's not producing that wants to get into producing uh, or anything you had wish you would had known early on that you would recommend to somebody. The one thing that I found out right away was that no matter what question you have about production, somebody else has already had it go to YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. I say the same thing. That's a lot of time. Like whatever you want to know is on YouTube already. And I would also say that like, if you really want to get into editing and, in production in general, learning how to warp in Ableton is like the first really thing that you should get good at. Because if you Number can do that, one. if you can do that, you can pretty much now start to do everything else. Mm-hmm. 
So just yeah, even so understanding said, the layout of it, Ableton in general, right? Yeah. The views and what each little screen does. The- yeah. And then with uh, with the videos and everything, uh, another good thing, uh, one of the things that I would I'd tell people is find somebody that teaches it in the style that you like, because not everybody shows you stuff the exact same way. So, you know, like you can find a guy that explains things very simply, very easily. And then there's dudes that go on and drone on for something that could have been a five, <laughs> like a five minute video. And it's like, just tell me how to do it. Find somebody that teaches it the way that you like it. And, you know, just find the videos. So with talking about production, is there uh You've done a lot of remixes and edits and bootlegs over the years. There are a few that stick out that maybe that like were, uh, you know, big for you. Maybe, maybe one was big in terms of like, oh, Diplo played this, but maybe one was like a personal favorite too. Um, one, of the, like one of the first maybe ones, one that just, maybe even one that just took off and just went crazy. There's two of them that, that kind of went crazy. So uh, the first one that people I feel like kind of, may have like gotten there because like i've made hundreds and hundreds for a while like i used to put one or two out every monday and i did that for a few years and then um and they would end up on dms uh dj city uh, and all the other pools but um one that i made that like turned it kind of was like the one that made people start paying attention was i made a remix to uh royals by lord and that was the one that i started hearing on radio and other DJs like showing me videos of them playing it and you know that and then uh after that one there's a remix of and me and DJ MGM who uh, made this one with me we call it the remix that won't die uh because we were about to throw this one away and we kind of just put it out for the hell of it and that one was a remix that we did of Sean Paul's Get Busy okay and that one, like I said, it was going to be a throwaway. We were we were over it. We were sick of it. We we're just like, fine, whatever, finish it, put it out. Nobody's going to care. We'll do another one next week. Yeah. And um, it ended up like uh, Jack U was put. So Skrillex and Diplo were playing it in their shows very consistently. Uh, Party wow. Favor is like working on something and it's playing in the background. Uh, like a few other dudes were just playing and that one like took off. And we were just like, we were going to throw this crap away. <laughs> so, <laughs> then, yeah, don't overthink it day, <laughs> and right? still to this day we'll be out and like somebody will be playing it or it'll end it's up on so something tight. and we're just like it's like this remix will not freaking die so, <laughs> yeah. uh mgm it. are you uh he's he was his production stuff was blowing up uh like right before the pandemic happened he was like tiesto there was like main stage playing that track of his um, yeah, the songs, he had uh, two songs signed to Musical Freedom, uh, which is TSO's label. So he, they did sign, uh, sign a couple of his tracks and um, a lot of people have been playing like his edits main stage and big festivals, you know, Tomorrow World and all this other stuff like, you know, in Europe for years. Um, and uh, it's, it's been really cool to like help, uh, like actually see his growth because uh, him and DJ Dibs, they used to uh, come to my place in Scottsdale. And I was, I, I even told him, I was like, look, dude, like, I was like, you guys need to, like, they wanted to start getting into like remixing, editing and everything. And I was like, look, go ahead, come over every week. Um, we'll block ourselves in the studio. Uh, we'll start making remixes. I'll put your guys' name on them. As long as uh, what we're doing, I'm teaching you guys and you're going to work on it with me and we'll get your names out so that you can guys, you guys can start doing your own stuff. Yeah. And then there's already like name recognition and they, like I said, I taught them. I taught them basics, as you said, Drew. Uh, automation and warping. First two things I, tra- I showed them because you're going to need to know automation. You're going to need to know warping if you're going to get into into production. So I taught them that stuff. I was like, look, if you can draw a line, you can make cool sounds. <laughs> so <laughs> so I taught them that stuff, and then they basically took the like just took what I gave them and ran so much further than I could have ever imagined. So it's been really cool to see both of their progress over the years. That's cool. Are you, uh, are you working on any, uh, original tracks right now? You have anything in the works? Uh, um, well, sadly I did have a lot of original projects, uh, but, um, 
I was using my DJ laptop also as production laptop and a patron at a bar I was at spilled uh, uh, her drink directly into the back of my laptop. So I've lost uh, those projects uh, and they weren't backed up, sadly. So now <laughs> I back up everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dropbox. All of my sessions are now, yeah, all of my sessions are now um, on both Dropbox and on my on my external so but i'm gonna get i'll get back on those um there should be a couple uh couple label releases coming out the first quarter of the year so that's that's my deadline on those so first quarter of 2022 yeah. there should be some that's some label releases awesome that's dope man yeah <clears throat> um one of the questions we had kind of I don't know if this your remix has helped in this, but uh, doing radio, you're on Dash Radio. You know, just what are some of the things you've learned from being on radio, and uh, the benefits or um, the, the the hard things that staying consistent on a radio show? Uh, is it it's every week or is it every other week? Every it's uh, every week. It's every Friday at seven p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Dash Radio's Dance X. Uh, and how did that all come about? It all came about because um, so I was doing, I had been on, I'd been to Dash like a few times, but as a guest. So I was doing, um, I did Seraphin's radio show. I did Baker Boys uh, a couple times. And after a period of time, like their uh, program director for one of the stations was just like, he's like, I see you here. Uh, who are you? You know, because he just, you know, see me around like and with these other dudes, but didn't know who I was. So yeah, the pizza you know, outfit. I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that would have made me way more recognizable. But uh, no. uh, who's so, the guy in the pizza know, onesie? My name's Pete. <laughs> last name's Su. Uh. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like I said, he he asked me who I was, and he's like, you know, why why I was there, and uh, at the time, like uh, Baker Boys and uh, Seraphin both had like two of the top shows on the station. And um, he was just like, well, you'd work with them a lot. Do you want a show? I'm like, yeah. Right. So that's how the, the, the Dash show came about. And um, now what, four, almost five years later, I still have a show and I had no idea what the hell I was doing as far as like hosting my own show. I've been on yeah. a lot of other people's. I just never hosted my own. But cool thing about having the show is being able to uh being able to like uh reach out to artists that i actually you know that i appreciate their work and have them as guests on the show so um we've had we've had bijou which is blowing up right now as far as like a uh, g house goes uh bijou's been on there dr fresh has been on there uh seven which is also signed to tso's label has been on there uh had uh, another person that does memes, Nathaniel knows he's been on there and just like, like I said, a lot of different people and it's been great. Oh, spider tech as well. So yeah. So it's, it's been great to like get it, you know, like get to meet these people, uh, talk with them and also pick their brain about, uh, you know, production because they're in there and first thing, like before the interviews or everything, they do ask about production and, you know, we talk, sometimes I get to, pick their brain and they'll give me, you know, some pointers. Uh, you're never like done learning with this thing ever. So, uh, me and fuse both did a, we did a guest set. We didn't uh, do the interview, but we did guest sets on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, cool. oh, yeah, that's right. I've gotten, yeah, I've gotten <laughs> guest sets from both of you guys, man. Um, yeah. all both were like super dope. I mean, if there was any way we could have gotten you into the studio or whatever to, to record it, uh, then I definitely would have, definitely would have loved to have you guys as like you know actual guest hosts well i know mine was pandemic era so it yeah, is yeah it there is, was but... no way uh i actually have a question for you um i mean i know you you like a lot of your trap and and even just with the show have you ever thought about doing your own night that's more geared towards the music you like instead of just you know gigging um it... i have and uh i've uh I've participated in other people's nights that, uh, that are that, and it's been fun, but I've also seen a lot of, uh, a lot of the things that they have to deal with, with, uh, 
with the venues, uh, the club owners, or anything else like that, and the headaches that it, ca- it causes just to, you know, to put all this together. Uh, I really do appreciate the people that are doing that because I know the time and everything that it takes. But me, myself, with uh, with the gigs and the show and um, editing and everything, it's uh, I'm already pretty pretty strapped for time. So yeah. you know, I, I do enjoy my me time. Um, I, I like being able to you know just go chill and do absolutely nothing in silence and have that time to myself. So I would be robbing myself. Uh, that- of it you it is valuable. I, I don't know who I was talking with, but that was today. Just having some actual uh, just downtime is so necessary. I think uh right. sometimes people are just go, go, go too much and can almost be worse for that that night, right? Because then you're just tired at the night and you're not enjoying yourselves. But exactly. I, I'm just curious because I know you like that style so much and it would be cool to have a pretty dope uh you know, monk spot, monk branded night in Scottsdale. That's like that. I would probably do it at a, I, if I'd have somewhere where I can have pizza at it. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe get a sponsor for it. Yeah, it would just be a Ma- Master Monk Mondays sponsored by Domino's. <laughs> that would be a thing, man. <laughs> I think it would be mandatory that the headliner wear a, a, a custom onesie. Yeah, and and onesie. have a slice in the thing. Yeah, all you got a DJ with and a just slice. pick it out, need it every once in a while. Just, yes, yeah. I think that'd be <laughs> mandatory. Part of the show. <laughs> that'd be awesome. Um, is there uh, anything else you got? No, I I don't I don't have anything. If the, if you ha- if he has any questions for us too, we would be glad yeah. to answer. Well, but... we were just finishing about Dash Radio, but I know you were talking. You got uh, Pitbull Globalization. Uh, coming oh up. yeah. So um, I'll be doing. Uh, I'll be a monthly guest on uh, on Pitbull's Globalization. Uh, the show is Double Down Radio with uh, with DJ Exodus and DJ Drift. So they're hosting the show, and I'll be joining them once a month on uh, Pitbull's Globalization. Uh, big shout to them for this opportunity. It's amazing. Uh, I do I do like doing that stuff. It's not going to be me speaking on the show. It's just a guest mix. But either way, yeah, something can, fun to do. How can people uh, actually find that? Um, how can you listen to it? Uh, Sirius XM. So if you if you guys are serious uh, XM subscribers. It's just on Pipple's uh, globalization. I don't know what station. Do, I think I want to say. Do it's any 13, of those? 17. Thirteen. Do, any of those, right. do they replay at all? I used to have. Uh, I used to have XM. I don't have it anymore. Or Sirius. If you want to replay, I believe they have them on uh, iTunes and Spotify. Um, if you go to uh, Double Down Radio on on Instagram, uh, just Double Down Radio, they have links to. Uh, their Spotify and their their iTunes, so you guys can go back and listen to the episode that I was just on last month. Uh, they also will be announcing when I'll be on again in the next coming weeks, so look out for that. Uh, I also do a lot of an- announcing again at Master Monk Instagram and Twitter, um, so you can look out for that. And like I said, my show is uh, the Mastercast. It's on Dash Radio. The station is Dance X. And I'm on Friday nights, 7 p.m. Pacific on Dance X. And uh, where can they find uh, your edits and remixes? All my edits right now are exclusively on directmusicservice.com. <laughs> Go to the search bar, type in Master Monk. You will see all your boys stuff. Um, I'm also going to be doing uh, another dump of like a lot of my older remixes, uh, like the remix that won't die. Just so, <laughs> so you guys can uh, peep that as well. But uh, yeah, so those will be um, those should be on there as long as well as like a back catalog of uh, a few of my other ones. So, hell yeah, dude! Well, we, thank you so much for coming on, man. This is awesome. Yeah, we appreciate uh, you coming on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're having me, man. Uh, me, Scooter, and Warner out there next next week. So we will be hitting you up to say what up. Oh, yeah, we'll pizza. get pizza somewhere, man. Yeah. <laughs> Eating pizza with pizza. Yes, sir. <laughs> that, could be, that could be the uh, great rate. Eating pizza with pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no, but right, seriously, dude. 
Thank you for coming on the show again. Any listeners that are, are listening, we uh, appreciate uh, rate and review the podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, you subscribe uh, and comment and like the video. All that stuff helps grow the podcast. Um, if you're listening to this episode, it, it's uh, going to come out uh, probably a couple weeks from when we have recorded today. So uh, things, if we're talking about something, the collective might already been over. So if you guys are hearing this, uh, just know that too. Uh, Drew, you have anything else you want to add? I got nothing. Thanks for all everybody right. for all the love. Thanks yeah, for having us. We appreciate, so much. It. appreciate yeah. it. Tag us, tag us in uh, your stories if you're listening to this episode. Tag Master Monk, tag myself, tag Drew Pierce, tag the Drew and Fuse show. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for today. Thank you guys. We appreciate you. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. Peace.